Hi everyone and welcome to this video on how to import and export data from MySQL databases using MySQL Workbench version 8. So in this video I'm just going to run through the process of exporting the data to make a backup and then how to actually restore that data as well. And this video is intended more for sort of fast host customers uh, who are just using it to back up basic websites. Uh, like I say I use it generally for backing up WordPress websites and this video will be helpful for that and show you how to do it. So First things first, we need to connect to our database. Now I've already set the connection parameters and I've got a video on how to actually connect to a database using Workbench and I'll put that video link in the description. So let's connect to that. And first of all, we're gonna to go to server and we're gonna to go to data export there. So here we can see my database there. And if we just explore that, it just says export there. So if we check that, and what we can see in this right hand pane is all the tables within that database. So we can see all the ones you'd normally expect, the WordPress ones. So we can deselect certain uh, tables if you want to, but generally speaking, uh, you're going to be doing full backups if you're uh, following this. So I'm going to leave all of those checked. Now, all these default options you've got here for what I'm using it for, which is just backing up a basic WordPress website perfectly fine. If you're backing up uh, very busy databases, so um, if you've got an online shop that uses databases or, or anything like that, I would look into these individual options um, because they're a bit more uh, a bit more in depth than this video is intended for, um, but they're important if you've got um, like I say, a, a database that's being written to very regularly. So I'm going to just uh, use the default options in this and for most people that's going to be fine. So we've got two options here. We can export to a dump project folder or export to a self-contained file. And I'm going to show you both. The difference is with a dump project folder, each one of these tables is backed up individually. So you can restore individual tables if you need to. Uh, so if I just wanted to restore WP links at a later date, I could do that. If we do a self-contained file, it's going to dump all of this in one file and I've got to restore the entire lot. So I wouldn't be able to pick and choose which tables I restored. So we'll start with a uh, dump project folder and you can give it a different name here. Uh, website backup in today's date, for example. And then if I'm coming back to this in a year or so, I'm going to know what that is then if I change the name. So pretty simple that. Let's just start the export there. And there's going to be a version mismatch uh, for me here. And the reason for that, you might not see this, but the reason I'm getting it is because I'm using um, MySQL Workbench version 8, which is the most up-to-date version. But the database I'm exporting from is on an older version of MySQL. It probably won't cause you any issues. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. So here we go. Uh, we can see this is finished and there's no errors. I would always recommend just having a flick through here to um, to, to check for any errors uh, because you might think it's exported, but there might be an error in this, these logs. So always check that. Now, as we're already here, I'm going to now export to a self-contained file. And again, I'm not going to worry about these two default options here. I'm going to leave them the same. But if you're running a big database, I would just double do a bit more research into those. So self-contained file, so the export there. And again, I probably should have changed the file name there, but it doesn't really matter for this video. Um, and there we go. So that has finished. Doesn't look like there's any errors. No. Nope. Okay, perfect. So now we've exported them, got a nice little backup for our website. Now, how do we go about importing that data again if there's ever a problem with the website? All right, let's close that bit. And we're gonna to go to server and it's data import this time. So again, fairly straightforward process. We've got import from the dump project folder. And if we click on there, we can choose that dump we just made. And see the same two panes from the other one, but this time we're importing the data. So if I wanted to import all of them, I just leave all of them ticked. But because this is a dump project folder, I can pick and choose what I restore. Uh, so if you wanted to restore all of those, fine. So we just start import and that's just going to overwrite any of the data on there. Okay, so there we go. And that's finished. Um, there we go. Finished. Doesn't look like there's any errors. So that data has now been written to my database. If we want to do import from self-contained file, we're going to find that dump file that we just made, which is that one there. Open that. 
and you'll see you haven't got the option to pick the uh, pick the data there, pick the individual tables. Now I know this is going to error, but it's a good a good way to show it. So I'm going to start import here. Now, as we can see here, uh, it looks like it's finished, but if we look, import has, has finished with one error, and that one error is really important because it actually meant the import didn't happen at all. So the error here, we can see, is no database selected. And if you're uh, if you're in my situation, so fastest customer, done this exact process, the same as I have here, you're always gonna get this error. It's really not a big problem. Uh, all we need to do is just add a little line of code into that backup we made. So. If we find that dump here, and I'm just hit, got it here, and I would recommend using something like Notepad++, but you can easily do this just with a normal Notepad, but Notepad++ is just a little bit easier to read. So what with what? Let's actually have a look at that error, and it says no database selected at line 22. Okay, basically it just means it doesn't know where it's got to put that data. So all we're going to do, and as we can see, line 22 is where the actual import starts. But we're just going to put a little bit of code in here and all we got to do is specify the database basically and you'll be able to use this use this code as you uh, as you as as you see it on the screen here so use and we need to copy the database name there and then paste that and then right that is exactly the code you need from there so use the database name and then the syntax at the end and if we save that close that and try that import again and this time is actually imported without any errors i think has it finished yes so yeah that was it that was all it was nothing to panic about um but it's a really useful thing to see uh just because you'll probably see that exact same error if you followed this process to the letter and that's how to do it and that's all the that's the end of the video thanks very much for watching goodbye for now